Hello everybody, it's time for another tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how to do a decloaking effect as seen in, for example, the first time I saw it was in Star Trek Episode 3. Uh, so here is an animation I did, which is up on YouTube right now, of a Protoss Dark Templar from the game StarCraft decloaking. Okay, so he decloaks and he runs around and does his stuff. So the relevant part is, okay, as you can see, his eyes pop out first, and then his body kind of appears, and then he has this kind of like shimmering effect to his skin for a while, and that slowly fades away, and then he becomes his normal self. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is, it's pretty easy to have a object kind of fade in from nothing. you got to be using Cycles Render, render. And as you can see here, I've got this little guy. Here's Suzanne, the monkey, set up here. So it has a standard, um, you know, a texture. Uh, I'm sorry, um, shader. So let's just go ahead and uh, add a shader, a transparent shader, and add a mix. And then you drag that there. And then you can mix it by, <clears throat> have it fade in and out by just dragging the mix shader slider. All right. That's extremely simple. Okay. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is, as you see here, the character doesn't just come in, just does not just fade in, but also turns kind of glassy and then fades in. So let's go ahead and do that part of it. So um, let's add a glass shader. Turn the IOR up so that it's kind of like extremely, um, the glass is very thick looking, and then we will add a mix, okay, okay, so now it's completely transparent, when I drag the, the mix shader for the glass slash transparent all the way down to zero, and now it becomes kind of glassy, and then it's kind of like half glass, half, there we go. So as you can see, you can kind of play with this until you get the right kind of balance to what you want. All right. So now by dragging the shaders, uh, the uh, mix sliders around, you get a decloaking effect. All right. So we've got these guys here and let's go ahead and take a look at how to to do well basically in this guy you could manually animate these things by just going ahead to frame zero going over top of this and hitting I on top of the uh, mix shader uh, slider you can see it turns yellow it means that a keyframe has been set then you could for example either go over here to frame 30 for example and you could either slide this over to one and hit I again, or you could turn this uh, auto keyframing on and just drag this over. And as you can see, it would change over time. All right. The other way to do this is let's say, for example, in, in, for example, in this character, oops, it has um, several different textures applied to it. Oops. So, you know, it would be kind of a hassle to have to do all this keyframing for every single material. For example, this guy's got his skin texture. Well, let's go to the end here. He's got his skin, his eyes, the, the um, gold uh, trim, the loincloth, the claws, the um, uh, gauntlet, the side blade. Um, leather straps, all that kind of stuff, more claws and stuff like that. So it would be much easier to have one object go ahead and control the um, this uh, mix shader here. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So let's go ahead and create an empty object. And then we'll select the uh, character here. And then let me go in and just delete the keyframes here just in case. Go back to the graph editor. Okay, and so, oops, 
sorry, go back to the node editor. All right, and so then we'll go ahead and right click on the mix shader here that controls the transition from normal to completely transparent. Let's go ahead and turn that completely to transparent. And right click on that and say, oops, clear keyframes. And say add driver. And now it turns purple, okay? If you have keyframes on it, you have to clear them and then it will turn purple. Okay, so if you select that mix shader, then you go to your uh, graph editor and select drivers. Then you will see that you can select this here. Oops. Okay, you have to select the actual thing that is being controlled, whatever it is, whatever has the purple uh, slider icon. Uh, that is what you must select in order to bring up the relevant panel here the, in the options. Okay, so in the graph editor with drivers uh, selected, then the relevant information for us are, are these sections here, drivers and variables. All right, so a variable should be created for you already. If not, go ahead and click on add variable. You can add more than one variable and mix them together in different ways. All right, we don't care about that right now. Uh, the Type of variable under drivers should be set to scripted expression. All right, and then under variable, then we have uh, by default, it sets a transform channel, and which is ex exactly what we want. And we want uh, to click on the object selector and click on the empty that we uh, had created before. And for the type, you can set this to whatever you want. Um, I'm going to set it to the X rotation. So whenever I rotate this object here, doesn't matter where it is on the screen or how big it is, how big it's scaled. Whenever I rotate this on its x-axis, right here, all right, it is going to control this slider, all right, and everything else that I drive with this. So, for example, if this character had like 10, 20 different textures, I could use the same methodology to uh, have the uh, rotation of this object drive the um, the mixing of, of the different shaders, all right? So that is what is going to create our decloaking effect. All right, so we've got that guy set up. Um, we selected the empty. We selected X rotation. I left in world space. I try to do this with local space. For some reason, it does not seem to work. I don't know if it's a bug or whatever. Anyway, that's the way it goes. So... Um, Let's go ahead and get another 3D window. And we'll select this guy here so that that way we can have one that shows you the effect and one that shows you the, uh, the um, non-shaded preview. Okay, so let's go ahead and rotate this guy on the X. And you would think that it would start to uh, fade the uh, character out, but it does not work. Why is that? All right, so... Let's uh, select that character, select the shader that we have uh, controlled by the driver. And you will see here, underneath the expression type, oh, for one thing, uh, you have to set the expression in this field here, where it says EXPR expression. You must set this to the name of the variable that you want to use. So in this case, it is called var. All right, you can name this whatever you want. If you name this something else, like decloak, you will see that it does not uh, auto-update. So you will have to manually type it in there, all right? Uh, you'll also see that I have this error message. It says right here, error Python auto-execution disabled. Also up here, auto-run disabled for the driver named decloak. All right, that is because that is in order to um, keep Python scripts from doing malicious things to your computer, you must manually save a file. So we will call this tutorial test. All right, and then once you've done that, you should see a button. It says reload trusted. All right, let's click on that, and you'll see that we've gone out of cycles mode. So let's go back into that. Shift Z. I don't know why that is not working. Okay. Oh, you can see that we've already started to do that. Let's go ahead and zero that out. 
So now, if I go ahead and select the uh, null or the empty object and start dialing in its rotation on the x-axis, you can see that it is in fact driving the mixing of those two materials. All right. Now, the, like I said, the real power of it you can't see here, but if you had, for example, this guy, for example, in this scene, I had, for example, um, possibly what, like almost a dozen or half a dozen different materials. Much easier to set up one thing and rotate it than to have, um, you know, uh, you know, and manually do all that. And what I did here was for the eyes, you can see the eyes come in early and then the rest of the body comes in. Well, that one I just manually keyframed. I did not bother driving the eyes with anything because I, I figured I can manually control that. It's, it's not that big of a deal to do it manually. So these techniques are just there for you to use whenever you want. Um, just mix and max. I like how he kind of gets all shiny and then does uh, what he needs to do there. Um, you could do the same thing with this. For example, you could, okay, you can see here that it's turning glassy and whatnot. Um, what I did was I had in, in the uh, case of this character, you know, you, you know, in a lot of uh, films, when they fade in, decloak, they have kind of a shimmer or, or sheen around them. And so I made like this, this kind of uh, hierarchy here. And then I had two different null objects. One uh, controlled this mix shader, which mixed between, between the glass and the transparent. The other one mixed uh, between the final transparency and the um, original uh, diffuse uh, color of that. Uh, I also added, in this case, I added kind of like a, uh, a bump map to the glass, which I did from... Um, well, you, you could do it, for example, feeding a bump map into here. It's not going to show up that well here, but uh, what you should do is take a bump map, like, for example, a noise texture, then create a converter to convert to black and white, and then create a math object that multiplies it, and then multiply it. All right. You can scale it and everything like that. Um, I did that to the, uh, I fed that node into the IOR, which is the um, index of refraction. And that is what gave it kind of this kind of rippled kind of glass look to it, all right? So that that is the basics of creating a decloaking effect in Blender. I hope that you enjoyed that tutorial.